Recently, the Archdiocese started a TikTok account, for those of you who follow TikTok. Um, so they asked if I would do some little TikTok videos for them. So I taped a couple, and uh, they put one on on Friday onto their account. It looks like I'm standing on a beach, and uh, the whole point is to explain very briefly why the Catholic Church says you can't get married on the beach <laughs> if you're Catholics. And you, everybody else can. Uh, there's no, we don't worry about sharks or those kind of things. Um, but at least, for, and I only had 90 seconds just to give a real quick little, okay, this is why we do it. And a, you know, kind of upbeat, TikTok-y way of doing it. So it, it's out there now. A couple thousand people have looked at it, and then people can make comments. Uh, and of course, a bunch of people don't agree. <laughs> they disagree, and I think, well, you're not disagreeing with my point. You're just disagreeing with that the Catholic Church says you have to get married in a church. Uh, and some are just you know, saying that, you know, all kinds of other kind of anti-Catholic stuff. And they, hey, this was positive, little positive, little TikTok thing. And well, why are you negative? What, what's the big deal here? This is, po you know, complain about something worthwhile instead of this. But I should not be surprised by it. Jesus tells us in today's gospel, hey, this is what's going to happen. I, I expect it when the church takes a, a stand that is kind of in opposition to how the world looks at things, and we take a public stand in that. Those of you who have stood along Dodge Street on the pro-life, you know, once a year statement. I think we're not even doing anything re real in your face, but people go by and flip you off. I think, well, peace, <laughs> good to you too, honking or doing things. I think, all right, so people disagree on the, uh, I was down one time at the Capitol for a little rally against the death penalty trying to convince the governor to um, change his mind. Uh, and there are a lot of people yelled things. <laughs> they go, I, all right. When I was at Guadalupe and uh, the work we were doing with immigrants, every, every once in a while I'd get a hate letter. Uh, and I always think, okay, you know, would I quit bringing Mexicans to Omaha. And I, I am not running the bus service that brings them to Omaha. Please. I'm just ministering to the people that are here, trying to alleviate their suffering. When Jesus says in the gospel today, do you think I have come to bring peace on earth? When I read that, I want to say to him, yes. Don't you remember the angels when you were born? That's what they said. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. We sing it at Christmas. And then now you say, no, sorry. Not coming to bring peace. Jesus tells us this, it sounds almost like a prophetic voice, like the, an Old Testament prophet. But I think it's just more of getting us ready for the reality. And probably all of you know this reality. The reality that even in families, sometimes there are divisions over Jesus over faith. We'd hope that that was not the case 
And I think there's even a sadness in Jesus' heart that this takes place. But it is the reality. The reality is if I live what Jesus calls me to live, for some reason, that's going to make other people upset. I don't know why. I would think as I try to be loving and kind, considerate, forgiving, peaceful, all the things that Jesus invites us to be, that should garner a positive response. But it does not. I know from therapy that if I speak truth to somebody about what's really going on in their life, even if I do it in the most gentle of voices, it may garner a very violent response. Because it's truth. Usually, if I get that kind of real strong response, I think, bingo, this, I was right. This is what's going on. And who we are as Christians speaks a truth. A truth that for people who know the truth but choose to fight against it, they don't want to hear it. And so they respond strongly to our gentleness because it pokes at them. It pokes at a truth within them that they will deny. So it's better to push you away than deal with the truth that they're avoiding. It's very important for us as Christians to make sure that in our living what Jesus teaches that we do it as Jesus did it. Sometimes when I'm seeing evangelical preachers I think you're garnering a negative response because of who you are and the way you're doing it rather than what Jesus is saying and doing. So it's so essential that we truly as Christians not be judgmental, not be condemning, but truly be as Jesus wants us to be Continuing to speak truth, but doing it as Jesus did it. Humbly, lovingly. And when we get the negative response, as we will, to not respond in kind. It's so tempting, I know. <laughs> when you're getting that hand gesture, you want to give it right back <laughs> instead of something more peaceful. It's important for us. It's the only way conversions will happen is to make sure that we remain true followers of Jesus to our core. Not easy. If you caught the second reading today, <laughs> Uh, we are encouraged by the writer to hang in there and to look at all the great ones that have gone before us and to not complain about it when times get tough. And he concludes at the end saying, after all, you haven't shed blood yet, have you? Like, nope, <laughs> I have not done that. But once you shed blood, you can complain. Then you've You've given even more. But until then, until that comes for us, then all it is is words, gestures, broken relationships perhaps. 
maybe a, a tough climate in which to live sometimes. But in the midst of all that, our hearts must be focused, as the, the writer tells us, on Jesus, just as his focus was. And so he could move forward with joy towards the cross.